Hi, Raul here and I'm back with another instructional video. If you shoot real estate photography, this video might be of interest to you. Does your real estate photography include any type of aerial photography? Many real estate agents want drone photography, particularly for large luxury estate homes. Realtors want to showcase the size of the property as a selling point so drone videos and images appeal to that marketing strategy. Drone shots are also beneficial for showcasing tall condominium apartments and commercial office buildings. However, with residential real estate photography, drone shots often make the homes appear too distant and they get lost with all the other homes in the image. This is particularly the case with smaller sized properties. So what do you do when you need to take some aerial shots but you don't have a drone or perhaps you're restricted from flying a drone because you're in a no-fly zone? Perhaps you haven't made the investment in a drone, but you're still interested in capturing some aerial type shots of the properties you're shooting. If the majority of your real estate projects are normal single family homes, then drone photography probably won't be required. And frankly, real estate agents don't want to pay the extra fees for drone photography for a property with a lower paying commission. So here's an alternative photography package you can offer your real estate clients that will add value to their listings, but at substantially lower cost than drone pricing. Have you considered shooting with a pole? A pole, you might ask. Yes, a pole. Although you won't get the high vantage point of a drone, you will still be able to get some shots that are almost drone-like in appearance and I believe will showcase the property better than a drone shot. Here's an example of a property I shot with a standard front view. It's a good image of the property, but it lacks some depth. Now here's a shot of the same property, but from a slightly higher angle. This was shot from approximately 13 feet in the air with my camera attached to a pole. The aerial pole view provides more dimension to the image and gives the property a greater presence. It's a more impactful image in my opinion. The real estate agents I work with love the pole shots and are now specifically requesting them. Shooting with the pole has helped me produce better quality images of my clients' properties and more importantly has provided a new income stream. Let me show you my aerial pole technique that is often better than a drone. So what equipment will you require? To start off with, you will need a pole. I used a Wooster Sherlock pole that extends from 8 to 16 feet. This is a painter's pole that you can buy at Home Depot for about 70 bucks. And here's the pole. Wooster Sherlock. I'd like to show you the entire pole, but it almost hits my ceiling. I have very low ceilings here in my house. So what else do you need? Well, you need a pole adapter to attach to the pole. So this is the pole adapter, which just screws into the end of the pole, like that. This adapter will set you back about 25 bucks. It's a bit pricey. I bought this from Adorama, and um, if you can find it somewhere else cheaper, please let me know where, because uh, I'd like to find a cheap alternative. But it does the job. Next, you'll need a stud adapter like this that connects to the pole adapter and to your tripod head. This will cost you about $7. However, this adapter, this 3 8 inch adapter, is no longer available at Adorama. They now have a quarter inch version. If you find another 3 8 inch version, please let me know where you got it. So you will need a quarter inch female to 3 8 inch male adapter to attach your tripod head that will cost you about $5. So, here's a stud adapter. Screw it into the tripod head. Connect the stud adapter to the pole adapter. Tighten it up. And there you go. You have a pole ready for some pole photography. And the last item that I recommend is a cell phone mount like this one to attach your cell phone. Uh, this is actually a bicycle cell phone handlebar mount I got a few years ago on Amazon. You don't want to be holding your cell phone and pole at the same time. You need as much stability as possible to get sharp images. I have all the links to all these items listed in the description section. So this entire setup will run you about $125. Uh, 
maybe a little bit more, but I think it's a very, very cost effective. So how do you trigger the camera when it's 15 feet in the air? I shoot with the Fuji X-T3 for all my pole shots. The camera needs to be set to live view mode and controlled via your smartphone. In my case, I use the Fujifilm camera remote app. All the major camera brands offer some form of remote app option. The first thing I do is set all my camera settings prior to mounting the camera on the pole. I normally shoot in aperture priority mode. So the first thing I do is I set my aperture. I next check the shutter speed. Since there will be some movement of the pole, you need to shoot at a higher shutter speed to ensure you have sharp images. If it's a sunny day, then shutter speed shouldn't be an issue. However, if it's a cloudy day, then you may need to increase the ISO to crank up that shutter speed. I try to maintain a 1 1 shutter speed or faster. Next, I manually focus the lens at the hyperfocal distance to get the greatest depth of field possible. I use Fuji's focus peaking feature to help me dial in the focus. Another reason to use manual focus is that you may be standing near a tree with overhanging branches which could divert the focus if you are set to autofocus. So once you have all your camera settings complete, it's time to mount the camera. I use an L plate on my camera to give me the flexibility to take vertical shots as well. Next I mount the phone to the pole and activate the camera remote app. I'm now ready to start shooting. Good morning. We're going to be doing a real world test of this pole setup. Right now it's set at 8 feet. I'm going to be shooting at uh, 2 feet increments. So I'll start at 8, go to 10, 12, 14, and then finally the pole fully extended at 16. It's really not 16, it's maybe 15 and a half feet. All right, so let's give it a shot and see how it goes. First, you've got to pick the vantage point we're going to be shooting from. So I like this angular view. This house is a 1920s uh, Mediterranean style home here in the Gables. And um, we'll see how it photographs from the pole. All right. Picking a spot here. And I got my first shot. So I'm going to extend it a couple feet to 10 feet. There we go. I have the pole marked at foot increments. There's my 10 feet. Make sure the pole is nice and steady and level. Unfortunately, you do not get the horizon level on the live view. I've got to figure that out. I'm not sure if they've been able to implement that functionality. All right, got the shot. So that's at 10 feet. Going to 12. Pole's getting a bit long. You can really see the sky now. All right. Move it a little bit forward. Take one more. All right, got that one. 14 feet next. Here's where it becomes a little bit tricky handling this long pole. So basically you got to go to the spot we're going to be shooting from, which is about right there. And then, got to be careful with that tree limb. It's about the spot. We're really high up there now. All right, there's 14. Got to be careful. Got to make sure everything is really tight. Okay, that's it. That's the longest it will go. So I'm going to do the same thing. All right. Get a little bit of a workout here. It's really up there.
losing a little bit of the sunlight, but that's okay. So this is a little over 15 feet. All right, we got our shots. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. So imagine you're at a shoot, you wanna take different vantage point shots. Um, this will really produce some nice, nice shots. It's not so high up as an aerial shot from a drone, but I think it's a more pleasing shot. Um, I definitely think it looks better than one of those high-end drones. Also, you're not, you're not getting the quality out of that sensor uh, out of one of these uh, small drones. So you're using your DSLR, if you have a mirrorless, whatever. Uh, much better sensor quality. The images are gonna be much crisper, a lot better. And if you're shooting raw, you've got all the flexibility to make whatever changes that are necessary. So I think this is an excellent setup. At the price point, you really can't beat it. All right, so let's see what those pictures look like. Here are a few more examples of pole shots versus ground shots. The pole shots really give the homes that extra three-dimensional perspective that's missing from the ground level shots. They simply give the property a more majestic look and feel. Here are a few advantages of pole photography. Number one, you have the ability to capture higher quality images over drone images. Secondly, there's a simpler post-production process since you may only be shooting with one camera. Thirdly, there's no need for FAA permits. And lastly, it's an economical option for semi-aerial photography. One last item to mention is that pole photography can't replace drone photography, but it will surely get you closer to the sky without having to own a drone. Well, I hope this video provided you with some value. If you liked it, please hit that thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel to give me the motivation to make more of these videos. Thank you very much and catch you later.